Welcome to the Stories Are Soul Food podcast, presented by Cannonball Books and Great Homeschool Conventions. All right, here we go. We're calling SD. Sam. You can call him Sam. If you want to call him SD, we should just call him Sid and me and... Hello. Hello, Sid <laughs> Smith. Sid Smith. <laughs> Nate was saying we need to make it clear that you are SD, he is ND, so we should just pronounce the initials. Sid and Sid and Sid and Sid and Nd. How you doing, Sam? I am pretty good. How are you gentlemen today? Oh, uh, we're hanging tough like new kids on the block. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> are we are we starting now? Yeah, well, we already did. Do we need to do? Hey, welcome to the stories or soul. Do food we? Podcast. Welcome to stories or soul food. We're here today <laughs> with S. D. Smith, author of the most popular bunny books of all time. Yep. The uh, my the kids. Ember sorry, series. my yeah, the green, the green ember. ember sorry, my kids just call them the bunny books. They always call them the bunny books, but. I thought you said funny books, like the no, most popular bunny. funny books of all time. Most popular. Like, <laughs> You're like, harsh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the most popular. They were intended to be funny, but I'm glad you found them amusing. Bravo. You know, I don't know if you're laughing with Bra- me or at yeah. me or near me. Or, bunny. But. Bravo. Yeah. Bunny. And my uh, my <laughs> oldest is eight, has just started reading them on his own and, and has questions for you that I'll save for later. I honestly, oh. I think that a huge part of your your empire that you've successfully built is that initial marketing approach of rabbits with swords that was mm. look at i have excitement for your children but moms don't worry it's safe they're bunnies <laughs> you know <laughs> it's like yeah it might be violent and dramatic and death and all sorts of things but they're rabbits so it must be it must be safe and comforting yes, when did you think of that idea how did the empire begin where did the rabbits with swords kickstart video? I actually video? Could, I could answer that question, Brian. <laughs> Sitting on the wow. porch in West Virginia, telling yeah, stories to his children about the rabbits in the grass. Mm. I mean, it's, it's actually, true. it's a really wholesome and wonderful origin story. Wow. It is. That's yeah. A good that's there, funny. Uh, did I miss any part that's really important? Because that's the picture I have in my well, head. Well, I assume there was a sword involved, right? Uh, yeah, no, there were, there were no swords. Um, I supplied the swords with my very fertile and bald head of fertile full of imagination. Fertile imagination came up with swords. Uh, yeah, that was, they were stories I told my kids and, and I'm glad that, that, uh, your guys, kids have enjoyed, have enjoyed them. Um, yeah. I, and, and, uh, on the contrary, my kids have not read any of your books and don't like any of them at all. Well, they, 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 they read, they read enough to know they didn't like them. I was, no, that's all, I, I was trying to sound <laughs> mean. Near miss. There, Tell your children they are, those books are not for them. <laughs> they are it. not for no, them. That's, they the may not read. It's true. It's not true. We, we, we all love, we all love those books so much, like big time. Um, so yeah, yeah. But, but my, my kids, um, I don't think they had read your books yet. Uh, Nate, so they didn't. They weren't aware that there was there was good literature in the world. So they were they were just like, man, this is awesome, Dad. You're you're the best. <laughs> so I tried tr- I tried to keep them sheltered as long as possible, but <laughs> they've now broken free. Nice. Well, you know, it's good for the rest of us. I will also <laughs> take this take this moment for our listeners, however many there are. I don't remember, but just to say, I am responsible for the fact that you are a full time writer. Oh, that's true. That, that 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 is not that is well. I'll say that's not entirely untrue. It's true to the hilt. It's true <laughs> in every way that it could be true. It's true. Well, I need this. I, I and our listeners are in the dark here. So how is that true? <laughs> so, so Sam was writing and was having success. And I was the one, he was a little nervous about making the leap. Because as anybody who's listened to this podcast knows, making a living as a writer is, is no small thing. And Sam knew that. Like that's a, it is no small thing. So you had a job, you were writing, you, you'd taken these stories that you, as opposed to now when you're unemployed, but you, <laughs> you had a job and you were writing stories and trying to cross over and to really grow it. It was clearly resonating. People liked it. And I, I believe it was in the basement at a Hutchment where I was still, or somewhere. I don't remember where it mm-hmm. was, but I remember just yep. telling you, it's like, you have got to do it. You just have to pull the plug, make the leap, go all in. This is sticky. Go all in. You'll be fine. Easy for you me did. to say. Uh, then Sam did, and he was fine, and I was right. 
<laughs> but he's been quite successful. You've really, you really are building an, yeah, a little didn't... IP empire. And well, it's... that's it's true. You know, the one thing I remember about you. So, well, we talked there in the basement. I can remember how nervous I was generally at the time, um, and and that included you know this kind of thing. I've always been sort of a uh, a rabbit, you know, the, the intro, yeah, yeah, totally, <laughs> really. That there's probably a lot of deep psychological stuff there, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I can remember specifically speaking of rabbits, like the main character in one of the main characters of the two brother and sister, Heather and Pickett. Like, I remember you specifically, maybe this was on the phone later, uh, but you're very kind enough to to um lend your ear and give me advice from your experience. And I can remember at one point you say, like, when I, was, when I was thinking about going full time. And like taking the leap, so to speak, the the hop, so to speak, you uh, you said what would what would your main character, what would Pickett do, and and like if you were in that, <laughs> if you're in that story, and that was that was such jujitsu on me <laughs> uh, that I oh, love it. I love I it. I swell you know, with I can pride. Tell all these kids to think of yourself as a character in a story, but if, what if, uh, if I wasn't brave enough to do that myself? So yeah, you, you did have a you did have a lot because I didn't know. I don't know. I still don't know a lot of authors. So yeah, um, it was, yeah, it was kind of priceless to, to be able to deft it was to a get, deft get advice move. from you. That was a deft move. So pick it for the listeners <laughs> would have taken the plunge. He would have died. Pick it is now a full-time writer too. So yeah, <laughs> yeah pick it is doing parallel, quite well, uh, <laughs> quite well yeah. on Substack. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And actually, if you started a Substack for pick it, it would do very, very well. Oh, that's that sounds like a horrible, a horrible <laughs> idea. Probably that probably counter counterbalances your, let, your good. Let your, kids, your no, let your kids do it. <laughs> Five dollars a month to read pickets, whatever. Uh, I do <laughs> pickets blog. Yeah, so you've <laughs> you've resonated massively, and there were some key friends who really kind of helped launch the books. Read a lot of revival, and yeah. the fact the fact that you were doing this the hard way, you were doing this yourself building building followers it's not like people call it self-publishing in some ways but it really was more like starting a publisher than self-publishing so you you built this whole enterprise your brother works with you your wife works with you everybody's chipping in wearing their rabbits with swords t-shirts you've got kind of a clan operation going in in a good way and it seems rabbit clan yeah it's, yeah, it's not, the, not the Ku Klux Klan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, no, that's, yes. they, they've been no help at all. Honestly. Yeah, they <laughs> honestly like they're no endorsement whatsoever. It's, um, it's been probably a net negative, honestly. <laughs> they're, they're in, they're in. What's the where is the ceiling for this? As as you are continuing to build, are you done building? Are you going to be maintaining what you're doing? Or do you have any big plans of like expansion? Are you going to be publishing other franchises? Is it going to be all like? just green ember publishing or or are you going to start picking up other authors yeah that's a great question when we first started and so my, when we first started it was my brother-in-law and, and myself and he was he had some experience in, in publishing like is your, is your brother not involved your brother is involved right he is yeah okay. he, he came on a little bit later right like he, so i'm when, not when I, I wasn't first i wasn't misremembering your brother-in-law is your brother okay good yeah, yeah. So my brother-in-law is Andrew McKay. Right. And yeah. He's, he's he's a great guy from Canada. Uh, real sharp. He's kind of a polymath. He can do a lot of different things. And 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 I'm glad you mentioned other people because it's like, I definitely you know self-publishing that idea is like, hey, I'm so smart. I'm gonna figure out how to do all this stuff, and I'll and I'll figure out how to do the formatting, and I'll do. And it really wasn't like that. I, I you know, we I did a lot of it. You know, small. We're more like a little independent publisher, as you said. We we you know, the, the two of us or three of us now with my brother, Josiah, like we, we all three, you know, wear like a million hats to do it. And, but our initial vision was to publish other books um, under story worn sort of as a, a little house, um, a little public, little press. And, and uh, we just did the green number because Andrew was like, no, this is, this is good. And I'm like, I don't know, man, this is, you know, this is, this is too, too intense and too serious for, for little kids and it's like rabbits so older kids won't read it so this is like the dumbest book like we shouldn't publish this. <laughs> uh, i mean i love it but it's like terrible marketing <laughs> strategy and anyway he's like no it's pretty good and so we, we published it and things went crazy so, so to the point that we were like we, we never have been able to catch up and and really um, yeah. consider publishing other authors we just don't have the capacity right now but, but so but I, would, I, I would assume you will at some point but it might be quite a ways in the future yeah, maybe so. I don't know if that's really what we need to do now. I'm, I'm 
Well, uh, Andrew's a writer. I think he might. Uh, I hope we publish some of his work at some point. Um, he just joined us full time. Like he started out with us, and then he's he's been doing another job, and he's just kind of back with us again now. And he's great. I've got some other series going myself. Like yep. I'm writing a series with my my son, who's 15. His name is also to be really confusing. His name's Josiah. Same name as my brother. And we're writing a series together, which is I'm so excited about. I can't I cannot wait to share it. And it's kind of a it's sort of got a big. So basically, you've already answered the question. Other authors will be published through Story Warren. Yeah, starting with yes. Josiah Smith, J yeah. something, J yep. D Smith. But the the fact is, JC. I knew you would you would launch other series, and yeah. when you've okay. launched other series, at some point, other things will come. You, it's not that you're actively putting out a shingle saying, "Hey, send us your submissions," but you're going to yeah. encounter other content that you want to put out into the world. And once you've built the machinery to do that, that's possible. If you find the right thing, the right thing happens across uh, happens across the desk. If your wife writes something that you think is fantastic, or your son in this case, I think there's yeah. it's going to start as start out as like a family of writers. I kind of I come from a family of writers myself. Yeah, I, you, I you just want me to works. fully imitate you. I think that's what you're <laughs> getting at. Is like just follow me as I follow Christ. I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> Uh, Quoting Paul uh, can't be I wrong. I don't know if I have the. I'm not sure I have the engine that you have. <laughs> so uh, I might. I might just be like puttering down the road in, in a Pinto. I'm, I'm not sure I have the. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I have the the uh, energy or audacity that you have. But, uh, but I'm. I'm giving it a try. Is, you're so, more yeah. sage and wise. I'm. I. I audacity. I have energy. I don't know that I have audacity. <laughs> I have. Um, burn it to the ground yeah yes. burn it <laughs> burn it to the ground so the question here is for you uh, related directly to the stories what are the upsides and downsides of writing with animal characters we've discussed this on a previous episode but as somebody who's doing that what are the upsides and downsides of writing with rabbits um i i, I love that and I, I, I hopefully i'll contradict whatever conclusions you came to in, uh, when you talked about <laughs> yes the last please time. yes please contradict it <laughs> Contradiction <laughs> creates friction, which is fun. So go for it. We want a big fight, yes. which will grow followers. <laughs> oh yeah, so we, we manufacture a controversy yeah. here. Yeah, I, I, of course, I didn't do it on purpose. Like that's one thing. I, I did yeah. always kind of like that thing. Like like C.S. Lewis said, he was always partial toward personified animals, and I've always kind of felt that way too. I, I like them, um, but and it's sort of natural. And I think it was natural because my kids were at a stage when I first started telling them these stories, there were, you know, rabbits hopping around in the yard. And I just started telling them about them. I do think later, like um, I think it was Zach Franzen who told me about sort of this storytelling uh, philosophy about how kids are, you know, that, that they can sort of view the world or, or experience um, stories are accessible to them through even at a really young age through like a, a, inanimate objects, like a toaster or, a, you know, some kind of a thing that doesn't even really have life. And then as you get a little bit older, there are ways to to tell stories that are generous or hospitable to kids through, through personified animals. And then, you know, as eventually as you get older, you, you're, um, you're, you're talking about real people. And and I, I don't know how much of that's true. That feels somewhat true to me. I sure. kind of never maybe outgrew the, the, I like the personified animal stage. And uh, I think a lot of people like that, but, but I do think like you can tell a little bit more of a serious story. Like, like the, uh, I, I like the, I like the fact that my, my, again, I didn't pick them, but I, I call myself a rabbit Calvinist. You know, I didn't pick the rabbits, uh-huh. the rabbits picked me, but, but I, I, I like the, um, I like the fact that you can tell a little bit more of a serious story be- because, you know, it's not like a, a kid being yep. stabbed or something. It's a Absolutely. rabbit. You do have that sort of uh, barrier or, or sort of filter, I guess, that, that makes it a little bit easier to tell more intense stories with, with less of a, I think you still have the sort of the psychic. I think the kids feel it. The kids feel like the, the danger and the difficulty and the darkness. And I like that because I think that's good. I think that's generous to kids. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest and to to tell faithful stories to tell stories that sort of, um, as Tolkien said, like have that sort of wind of like reality, capital R sort of blowing through the the story. So I love that. And and I think that it's been a, it's so, even though I wasn't smart enough, even when you talked about like, marketing or that kind of stuff like again I, I don't think i was ever very smart about any of that stuff but i think it stumbled upon <laughs> or was given yeah. maybe as a better providentially kind of uh, uh some gifts that, that i that were like a cool playground for me to play in and yeah uh, i think personified animals are a really fun playground that can be really generous and hospitable well to, it's not to young often readers. it's not often that you can just uh say something 
that to sell a book that doesn't you don't have to even talk about the story you know where mm. you say it's rabbits with swords yeah like there we go rabbits with swords and you also right, that, that plucks the strings of reap a cheap yeah you know a mouse with a sword from narnia yeah, and, no, and nobody down. else is yeah people red have wall. watership down but red, red really red wall so yeah. it's always been yeah. successful but watership down is obviously a very different version just because the rabbits are being they're not personified in the same way they are right to a different to a different degree uh, yeah. to a lesser degree but i think here's here's a, here's a weird thing for you that i think this is just this is a random aside that's a very small sample size so it could be completely off base margin of error on this is like 98 percent plus or minus <laughs> that's, that's pretty accurate yeah so but the the thing is i think the telling stories we've talked before about how using animals can enable you to tell more serious stories mm. for kids you know you, you can put handles on it and really you know grow them and feed them stories of courage and bravery and sacrifice and all these things that are really important to their souls and their imaginations but mm. you can do it in a way that's more accessible to them and less terrifying but the yeah. That's what we say. However, I would add a layer that says what we're doing is actually enabling to a them to access that bravery and courage in a way that they would not if you were writing about adults. Mm -hmm. So they don't know what it's like to be an adult, and it's, it's hard for them to make that imaginary leap just because they are human and they're talking about being a big grown-up human, and it's a very different thing. That you'd have to fully explore but when you have it a rabbit is childlike permanently even in adulthood so yes. when you when you have an animal that you have personified and put into an adventure you can give that animal all these adult traits and attributes they're grown up but they're still it's still just a kid and the they're mm -hmm. small and they're at the mercy of others and uh, the kid can relate so i think there's actually ways in which a kid feels trauma, duress, stress, mm -hmm. sacrifice, bravery, courage, more intensely when it's mm -hmm. an animal story than, than they would if it were a human story. When you're talking about mm -hmm. that, that lower middle grade, but mm -hmm. mom doesn't mind because mom doesn't feel it as intensely. And so <laughs> mom, it's like, it's a way of us giving kids really strong, potent stories mm -hmm. that mom is not trying to protect the kids from in an unhelpful mm -hmm. way. We're giving them real food. We're being generous and hospitable to them as you like to describe. But my daughter, for example, my youngest gets, I mean, she gets wrecked by animal death mm -hmm. in stories and movies, but is, you know, like the idea of human duress and human pain is kind of like, meh, you know, whatever. And yeah, she's still very much, sure. she's still very much in that, that middle grade space. It's harder for her to relate to an adult human going through a struggle than it is for her to yeah. relate to a cat, a rabbit, a mouse. Uh, she can immediately yeah. relate and, and fully invest with complete loyalty and, effect, and affection in the happiness and well-being of something mm -hmm. soft and cute and cuddly and accessible to her childish imagination. My daughter's the exact same way. My nine-year-old, my youngest, is, is exactly the same way. And I totally... And what's cool to me is that that's exactly been my experience. Like the, the, the most, I get a lot of feedback, a lot of letters, a lot of notes and messages and stuff. And, and it's a remarkable, and maybe you have the same, same experience, but it is remarkable. Like the extent to which people, kids, especially who have gone through suffering, like um, cancer or um, yeah. death or loss or tr some kind of trauma, like you said, even in the real, like that these books really, really resonate with those people, like yep. big time. And parents and families feel really like that's what I, I get super moved by people in that, like going through pain. Because like, like you said, that intense pain is usually sort of a, an adult experience. And, and yeah. it, but, but when kids experience it, like it's almost like, like you said, they don't have handles for it. Like yep. they don't know what to do with it. And so I, I love I love thinking about like how, how I can love and serve those kids or like giving them a gift. I'm really super eager to kind of get in hands of people, uh, uh, families who are going through suffering or whatever. That's been, a, again, something I didn't plan, but something the Lord's, I feel like the Lord's used the books in that way. And I'm, so I feel like that resonates with what you're saying that, that, that um, they're kind of like, get, it gets past like the old watchful dragons thing, but, in, but instead of just the intellect, it's like the, it's just like a different capacity and, and it's sort of like sh almost short, sort of it goes around that sort yep. of capacity to, to deliver this, 
um, goodness. And, and again, I, I'm not smart enough to figure that out, but that has been my experience, exactly what you described. Can I jump in here? This is the time to ask, I think, the question my son Asher wanted me to ask you. Um, it's Spoilers. I'll, I'll avoid Uh-oh. avoid the spoiler. Everybody's here. read Ooh. these books anyway. Everybody has. So <laughs> every yeah, yeah yeah. And if you there, haven't, there are tens of us. As we've talked, <laughs> as we've talked about, it doesn't matter. But he wanted me to ask you why did so many of his favorite characters? Why did you? Why did you want them to die? <laughs> hmm. That's the eight year old so question. Many. He said <laughs> he, he when he he said why why did you want to have the cool characters die? Huh? That's crazy. Um. Uh. Yeah. I don't. If it makes it sound like there was like a bloodbath, like nonstop uh, with with the, with the rabbits, uh, <laughs> there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> there's really there's not that many. There's only like I can only think of. Maybe well, you don't have to get you don't have to give it away too much, but I, I think yeah, when well, he he felt it, it's what we were, were talking about. He really yeah, yeah, felt yeah, right. the, the those characters. Yeah, and I, I I think that like that had to happen. I didn't like that either, but but I but I, um, I, 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 I hated that part of what I wrote. <laughs> I did, but it felt like it had to it had to be meaningful. In particular, for some of them, uh, I'm thinking of one in particular. Like it 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 almost had to happen. Like it would have it would have been weird for it not to happen. It was sort of the fulfillment of their. It had to happen, sort of like according to the laws of story. <laughs> and, and this, this, um, Those this, unyielding this laws story. of story. Yeah, I didn't want to go to jail or like story jail or anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was. I feel like it sort of had to happen to be honest with the story, and and um, it wasn't just about like sort of raising the stakes, but there, there was definitely a, certainly a, a raise the stakes, lower the hopes kind of a uh, uh, need in the story. But it's also sort of the arc of the character because the stories are not just about like I th- I, I used to think the stories were mostly about hope because it's about the mending, it's about um, the character's longing for this sort of mending to come and working for it. But it was, it, the story is more, I got a critique on a, on a screenplay that I wrote um, with a friend and, and the critique was, well, one of them was like, the screenplay is not very good, but uh, the <laughs> other, uh, which was very accurate, I think. But the, the other part of it was um, that the story, you keep, you know, you think that the story is about hope, but it's not, it's actually about keeping faith. Uh, because the conflicts are mostly about sort of like the temptation to 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 um, join a, the betrayal or like because uh, all the com- moral complexities on the side of the rabbits, the, the enemies are not really like they're not really like people in that sense. They're more like orcs or, you know, sort of like spiritual force or something. Yeah. I mean, they're not that, but they're they're kind of like uncomplicated evil in that sense, like just have different degrees of it. But there's not like, you know, there's not like is there good in them? That's not really what I'm concerned with. But the rabbits are super. They're they're really complex. And they have you have these these like Judas types and these sort of and and it's tempting. And so really, the, the story is mostly about keeping faith. With, You're with right. Sort Betrayal is a major cause. theme. Yeah, it is. And then and then there's also like sacrificial love. So really, the story is about faith, hope, and love. That's really the kind of the heart of the story. And that that love part, I think, that ha, you know, in order for that to be, un, and again, I didn't do that actively in my mind, but it just sort of like you know having to review it, mostly thinking about it as a as a as a like a visual story or a movie or show or something i had to think had to actually examine it in ways i never would have if it's just a just the novels but but i, I look at it and think oh it's it's about faith hope and love and, and that love part it, it really is this sort of self-denying self-sacrificing love that and i think that really it's you know the the, the lord said you know there's no greater love than to lay down your life for your friends so so that it was almost inevitable that had sort of had to be there and yeah. for, for to underline that, that 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 part of it have you seen that uh somewhat viral video of the of the deer that swoops out of the woods on a game camera and then just stomps a hawk that is yes it's just the bitch is bizarre it's trying to kill, yeah, uh, kill imagine, a rabbit right and just gets yeah. into like a death frenzy the deer gets into like a warp spasm of the <laughs> ancient picks and comes <laughs> whipping out and just smack yeah. smacking that hawk <laughs> I can't wait for that and the the ride in the dance uh, <laughs> right? rabbits with swords uh, co- cr- crossover um, <laughs> ma- mashup moment. But you can imagine when anything like that happens, my you know you can imagine my my messages in my in, you know inbox and stuff kind of gets full if, there, if there's a rabbit hopping or you know I, I didn't have any idea that rabbits would actually sort of uh, do any sort of fighting or resisting. But there there are lots of videos of them like kind of oh, jumping yeah. over a hawk or flying or oh, yeah. running away. Those are those I, are my I favorite. Those are my favorite. The favorite, my favorite, are the ones where the rabbits get a little bit of swagger, like they're so <laughs> they're so fast, like the ones that are real quick that they're willing to get out in the open and tempt the birds of prey. 
and then just evade and dodge and jump and it's like weird i love it it's like they, it's it. like they paid a guide to take them out to swim with sharks like i've done <laughs> it's like hey we're gonna, we're gonna take you out to the peregrine falcon field and we're gonna do a lot of zigzags <laughs> and we're gonna do, and we're gonna do a cage free swim uh, yeah the running of the bulls the, the, the <laughs> rabbit pan pantaloba yeah no. they, they that i didn't know about that stuff again i i can't probably stress how ignorant i i am of, of uh nature creation rabbits like people sometimes think oh do you raise rabbits like, no <laughs> I, I don't i don't know anything about rabbits i did i did learn a little bit but but uh yeah that's uh i was surprised to see those videos like that was i was like and oh, now now so millions really of happy. fans everywhere are sending you every single one yep yes every yes. single video is going to be fan sent to sd smith <laughs> immediately hey <laughs> it look it's it one of millions. it's one of yours it's one of yours <laughs> It's, it's true. It's all true. <laughs> uh, this That kind of touches on what I was also thinking about. So Nate touched on kids can feel how a rabbit acts perhaps better than an adult. But I also wonder if rabbits allow you to leave out a ton of extraneous detail and realism mm -hmm. that you actually would have to do if you had humans and allows you to focus on you have very thematic storytelling. Like it, it almost... Yeah, you're you get, able you get to physical reduce it. You get physical designation, like you're, you're, yeah. I can, I could see that really working, where it's like it's easier to describe and have a quick handle on what this rabbit looks like and that right. rabbit looks like. Because we're not stressed about what exactly the rabbit's doing at any particular time, besides the main action of your plot, you know, and the thoughts mm. that they're working with. We know they're sitting there with their nose wiggling. That's right. what they're doing. Yeah. It's got a tail, <laughs> it's got legs and a nose, and uh, it's probably touching its ears. Those are the things that move. <laughs> but you also, with yeah. you, when you add swords and personify, you've got a little bit more, a little bit more gesticulation and description that's necessary. Right. And I don't, I don't mean that in a sense that it's not, your stories aren't real in that way. I just think the focus is what makes them so fun to read. It's because yes. you're not, we're not distracted. Yes. Well, I, that's, I totally agree with that. That's the, I mean, to me, like writing fiction is, is a magic trick and, and uh, like the best writers, you know, like just even think about, well, I often think about Harry Potter or like JK Rowling, like th that world is absurd as far as like, if, if the kind of things that they can do can really happen, like that's, you know, there, there's always that sort of like, what's the cost of magic or the cost of power if there's not a cost and you can just kind of do it all the time or whatever, then it's sort of like a boring story. These, Right. But, but if you, but, but great, great writers can just like not make you think about it. You're just like, don't think about the fact that of course they could do 50 different magical things to, to move, but you still stay engaged because it's a sleight of hand trick. It's like, look, look at my left hand. And, you know, meanwhile, your right hand's like, you know, don't think about the fact that these are rabbits who eat grass or whatever. Like, don't think about, them in that way only yeah think about them this way and think about them in this really limited sense and and i'm i'm high, i'm very focused on the plot and and sort of internal stuff with the characters like point of view character what going deep with them and not not um i don't like giving i do like giving enough details to where sort of like you have those little hooks where you can sort of know where you are and all that but, of but course, i'm not yeah. super interested in that like even to do blocking even for battles or for like stuff is like, that's yeah. hard work for me. I don't, I don't love that, but I, I do that just to try to, you know, to, for clarity and removing obstacles um, from the reader. But, but uh, I like, I like the internal stuff and, and yeah, I totally agree with you that it's like, I don't spend a lot of time trying to, you know, indulge in like whatever they're, um, he, he was this tall and he was, you know, I, I, <laughs> I, it's, it's all about the internal feeling and the struggle and like how that's related to, um, yeah, the, the sort of the plot, and, and it's absolutely. I think all writing is sort of sleight of hand, but um, that's definitely a big, um, but yeah, a big, a big feature. I think of of the Green Ember stories. If you had to write a series, another series with another species as your uh, as your base race, what uh, what animal would you pick? Hmm. 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 I I, I have never ever considered that i thought you so, might not have <laughs> you, <laughs> so let's go on the record correct. let's go on let's go on the record right now first question let's get let's, let's get this let's get this sorted <laughs> well the, the only i i do kind of like um I, I like squirrels but i feel like that's just too close to it would just be doing the same kind of thing and and i'm not I again mean, i'm squirrels, not super squirrels like, are awesome yes rabbits with tails rabbits, rabbits with tails <laughs> <laughs> jumping climbing rabbits um, yeah, so I, I, it might be it might be them. I really don't. Again, that's not like I'm. 
I'm not, I almost feel like that would have to sort of happen. I, we, we've got, I like, you know, I live in sort of the country in Appalachia and, and, and we've got squirrels and rabbits and uh, deer and a lot of the, the animals that are in the story. Like, but this, these stories really aren't about animals. They're, they're, that's just sort of a way of, oh, way sure. of, of doing it. I, you know, I did tell my daughter when she was little, around the same time we started the, the rabbits stories I, I i used to tell her a story about a, a, a little dog like a, his name was chance and he sort of lived in, a, in an alley and, and would take care of these other little little creatures like she would only say like what's gonna happen to the creatures what, what's going on with the creatures <laughs> and all these little there was like a little rabbit and a little squirrel and a bunch of different little things and he would sort of he was this protector for them and they and it was this whole trek from the alley and in a slum in the city like out to a country farm was sort of this big long journey and it was like the cereal. So it might be the chance, chance, the dog story. This that might be with a bunch of little uh, personified animals. A couple of times you've mentioned the word generosity and how important generosity is in writing. Can you, can you explain a little more about that? What do you mean? Well, so if, if we're Christians, um, I, I just think that the, I think that the way that the culture describes it's artists a big is if, a little by bit, the way. it's a big if. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's a, I, I qualified it. I qualified it. Yeah. If, if uh, I think that the way that we think about artists is sort of as elite, like I think it's it's like a half truth. It, I, there's something glorious about sort of, sort of telling stories. I think that it's it's reflective of the way that God made the world and has revealed Himself in, in a way that's special. I think and 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 spectacular and really magical. I, I sort of think of the vocation of storyteller as like a a two hander that, that in one hand you have to hold on to this like ma- it's magic, it's amazing, it's incredible. Like don't ever lose it. It's it's this, you know, you're 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 giving words from your mind, and you're putting these little symbols on uh, on a glowing screen that then go on goes onto paper, and someone in Africa where I used to live could pick it up and 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 see that pretty close to what you saw in your mind, and it's this, it's it's really really magical. Never lose track of it, but like that's one hand, like hold that tight with one fist, and then on, on the other hand, hold on to the fact that like that it's um it's an ordinary vocation that's rooted in love and service. And and so I, because it's a Christian vocation and and um and we're we're not intended to sort of like um, become you know it's our goal isn't to just sort of gain elite status it's it's to love other people and to serve them and to give them so that's where the generosity like yeah. I can't my whole and it was so easy again it's one of these things where I wasn't clever enough to to just set about this th- this way but because it was my, these stories were for my kids like exactly directly and, and in the beginning it was completely them and i had no ambition even when i wrote it down i was like well if, if my kids love it and it's just sort of this little testament or this little um token it's a from, gift from, from this, these moments that, yeah. yeah that we had together i was like that's that's a pretty sweet deal like that's yep. a good life like uh, that, you know they'll, my grandkids will be like oh crazy old grandpa sam he you know he wrote a story and like that's a really high crazy bar old grandpa me. Sam just was into rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> but but so the so the 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 but because it was rooted in that, like it, it wasn't hard for me for that to extend out to like these other kids, like other kids and families like mine. And and I felt like, oh, this is a little family story that other families like too. And it was almost like having people over for dinner. And I just love that sort of vision of hospitality. That's how it feels. And that's so that's about yeah. my career is deeply rooted in that like very um intentional sort of love and it doesn't mean that i'm like oh what do kids need right now they need to hear i I don't really think of it exactly that way but i do love them and and so every writing session starts out with prayer for those kids like you know lord will you get past my uh my clumsiness and my limited sort of thing and help me give these kids a gift uh, can (laughs) this is where sam just exceeded my piety (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you pray before i write I pray. every, every <laughs> writing session starts with me like slapping my face yeah i was like <laughs> nate goes with a theragun before every yes. writing session <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh well i'm a very very good person <laughs> if, if, if we don't go away with anything else we knew that, anyway, all, that we knew that already uh, sam when, when i'm at my best I'm, I'm trying to think generously and it yeah and it has been i've been given the gift of that being pretty like simple because of the way these stories came about it's just been uh simple in a sense and, and so the, i just keep praying that that's like the 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 root that's the that's the heart that, that's like the north star those are my coordinates and and i would rather like fail at either being sort of oh big time author successful or you know whatever movies or any i'd rather fail at all that stuff than fail at like the duty to, to love and serve these kids and give them a gift i almost kind of feel like 
that other stuff, I, I'm not afraid to hustle on like you know, sure. working hard and getting better. I, I, but I also like, I'm not afraid to fail at that. If, if it means sort of staying faithful to the, which is sort of the vision I have, which is necessarily finite and limited, yeah. but uh, of, of, of giving those kids a gift. So that, that's where the sort of generosity and hospitality are, are like anchor, anchor words for me. It's almost like he thinks about stories like food. <laughs> Callback. It is. <laughs> the stories are soul food. It is actually. I probably just ripped all this off. Of no, me anyway. that's it actually, good. I think that's really, really important. I think for anybody who's an aspiring storyteller who's listening, there's a lot of them. And as we've said before, whether you're a mom or a dad, you're, everybody's a storyteller. So you don't yes. have to be published in order to be telling stories. You're telling stories every single day with your yes. character and your character dialogue and with the amount of control God gives you in your day, uh, the people you encounter, the people you're serving, your character in their lives, and you're getting to write scenes. And if you're sitting down and writing stuff on a page, you have to be, in order, in order for it to be really fruitful, you have to be thinking about it as food. I am trying to, like, it's hospitality. I'm going to try to serve something. I'm going to try to cook something up. For people and however many people, loaves and fishes style that God feeds with this is kind of up to him. And yeah, the hustle yes. and grind is part of it. We got to, we got to do that. But I've had, uh, I mean, stuff that's been the most critically acclaimed and even the most fan loved not serve as many people as other stuff, you know, mm. where it's like, okay, this one, you know, the critics aren't, aren't all singing songs or the fans like it, but it's not like they're super fans it's not like they're bonkers but it just went and went and went into more countries and to more people and and so on mm -hmm. but it's ultimately like we cook we cook mac and cheese we cook the best mac and cheese we can cook and then you know yes. god gives the increase yeah i think the rather than taking a gary v approach a gary check <laughs> approach only it's that out of generosity which is which is really encouraging to encounter because it's someone who is willing to go for an empire of publishing, yeah. but it's not for themselves. Yeah. You want to, it's like setting up m like more places at the table. Yes. You yeah. Know, and we want to do that. And we also want to feed our families. So we do want sales and there's nothing, there's nothing yeah. wrong with selling your books and making money and, you know, paying for college for your kids and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's all great. But the ult ultimately the meal has to be wholesome. We want, mm -hmm. we want the meal to edify and to strengthen and to strengthen imaginations and to be soul food. We want, whether it's a little, a kid somewhere who's gone through hardship, a kid somewhere who's never gone through hardship, mm -hmm. parents who are reading it. Like I, it's, I don't know if this is the case for you, but you know, I write for kids, but I'm probably, my readership is like 80% adult. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, it's high for me. It's not that high, but you know, there are tons of adult readers, but not, not that many for sure. And there's, there's something where there's, a lot of people who got off on the wrong foot or struggling or whatever, or even well-adjusted adults who just, they know where the more wholesome food is. And the more wholesome mm -hmm. food in our culture right now tends to exist at the middle grade level. There's yeah. not, there's not as much, uh, when you get into YA and teen, it's like, good luck <laughs> yeah. finding, finding wholesome stuff. Then there's yeah. some stuff for adults. There's some literary stuff that's actually great, but still the mid, the interim going from YA to teen is, difficult it's super super yeah, difficult it's quite a gorge I, I, can i extend the, the metaphor even further do it i love i love that you're talking about like setting the table for more people I, that is such cool I, I love that went straight in my straight in my heart uh and but i it's it's also like again if you're talking about people who are wanting to be authors or even thinking about their own storytelling like in the way that you described but particularly if you're talking about writing stuff down for other people to 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 enjoy like it, it is so much like making a meal in, in all these ways, like if you went to all that work, like cutting up all the vegetables and cooking the meat and kind of getting baking the bread and everything, you're putting it all on the plate. Like, um, don't put a cage around it. Like you don't put yep. a complicated, a cage with a complicated lock and you're like, <laughs> Hey, good luck. You know, good luck getting to that. And I think that's sometimes <laughs> in our, like in our arrogance, we're like, I'm going to be a spectacular yep. author instead of thinking about like clarity, like clarity is charity. And instead of like showing off and, and um, like, like the person who's like hogging the ball on a basketball game, like, you, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to do something together. You're trying to give a gift. So like, uh, it feels like really important to me again, if it's not about, I am going to try. And I think we should try to be excellent. I'm all for that and do be good at our craft and everything, but really 
you're trying to give someone a story. It's storytelling. You're, there's two there's two parties involved with that word. Like give them a gift and don't um, don't bind it up with like uh, especially uh, like um, sophistry or I'm trying trying to think of yep. the word like a, a, a you know tr- I love that you said mac and cheese like that that just makes me think like yeah that's really just really PB&J, good mac. Like, let's make yeah. really good yeah. mac yeah. 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 And make the best you can. That's fine. Like, I'm just saying like, but I'm not, I'm not Shakespeare. I'm not going to like, I think the word's a conceit. You don't want a huge conceit that they got to figure out. Also, you you don't want, we've all read books where it's about the author. The book, the book is now about the author and some of them I even enjoy. Yeah. You know, (laughs) where it's like, man, nice. Yeah. Well done. That was nice. And I still don't give a rip about your characters, (laughs) but. That exactly. Was, yeah. That yeah. was deft, but I feel like I'm I'm watching a a Harlem Globetrotters game as opposed to a real one. You Feels know? like a lot of yes. modern American authors are like that. I'm I'm thinking like yeah, the classics, they're trying to be Ernest Hemingway. They're trying Joyce, to be like James they, Joyce. You know, although yeah. he can still do a he can still do good ones, but uh, yeah. But what's the point? Like that's all. Yeah, it's exactly. It's about like uh, if if you keep showing up in the reader's mind, you're probably doing something wrong. Yep. At least in like in stories. I mean, it, yep. Yeah, it's I, I, it's not a competition to see who can write the best sentences or the best paragraphs. And like I, I think you should. We think we should try to write the best par- paragraphs. It's a little bit I, of a competition. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> we want. I mean, but, yes. The th- the simple fact is. We all serve a God who wants us to steward our opportunities and to try to yeah. do what we do with excellence. He doesn't want us to phone anything in, but yes. it's very, very easy for us to lose track of the actual scoreboard and yes. uh, and be just trying to score points for the for the ego. And I think that's I, that is honestly anybody who's been an anybody who's been a professional author for any amount of time is either completely jaded. And completely artificial and false at this point. Like they're just fake. <laughs> they're fake to the core, or they've experienced a large dose of humility because you cannot take your stuff out far and wide without developing a real thick skin and a real humility yeah. and understanding that it's not about you. Because the number of people who will come up to you and say, oh, Yeah, I don't like your book, or <laughs> I think rabbits are stupid, or like, yeah, I tried to read your story, but it was dumb. Like, <laughs> I've had that, like, uh, without the, not the rabbit comment, but I've had that a thousand different ways. You know, it's like, you cannot, I've been doing this since 2007, and I've got 12 novels out there, and I've toured for most of them, and you cannot do that without becoming humble or faking it. Like you go out on tour and you come back and fake like you're super famous, you know, like, no, I showed up to a Borders in Chicago back when there was a Borders. And I would like to point out also, I had the last laugh. Borders, you're gone. <laughs> but I showed Burn up to, to the ground. Yeah, I showed up to a Borders in Chicago for an event. It'd been a grueling, brutal, brutal, brutal time. I'd had on this tour. I had one day that started day in scare quotes. I started in Oakland. Did schools in Oakland, got kicked out of one school in Oakland because it was a Jewish school, and I'd written a short story called The Rise and Fall of Circumcision at one point, and so they thought I must be anti-Semitic, and so I was, I was booted. So I did two schools in you Oakland. Were cut and, off, so to yep, speak. <laughs> yeah, I did two schools in Oakland and canceled from the third, went straight to an airplane to Phoenix, did a bookstore in Phoenix, then like this after-hours event with sales reps and bookstore retailers and then straight from there to the airport to red eye to chicago got picked up in chicago you know from the airport went straight to schools that morning and then straight into a a bunch of schools in chicago straight into a car to milwaukee and then from milwaukee up to madison and just you're just and it's just like going 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 and there is nothing more demoralizing than going like that and showing up to an event and there's five people or showing up to an event and unexpectedly like I went through a school in Chicago where I think like Rick Riordan had been there like the week before and I show up and everybody's just like yawn, you know, mm. like whatever. <laughs> this is one of those gold coast schools. And then I went to a small poor school in a Polish suburb and the only person who'd ever visited their school before was an astronaut. And these people were out of their minds excited and it was an amazing event and yada, yada. But I showed up to a Borders in Chicago, pouring rain. It was like, oh, great. Like, it's horrible weather. Nobody's going to come. I show up. I walk in. There's literally somebody vacuuming. That's like 
That's the only <laughs> <laughs> like a movie. Yeah, exactly. And I, I ask with where the manager is, and manager comes and sees me and just turns like bright white and says, "Was that today? Was that today?" You, know, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> you know, it's like so. I spoke to some Borders employees who like he rounded up to try to make me feel a little bit like okay. And all I did was like, you know what? Let's just talk. What do you guys want to talk about? And it's and it was all Borders employees asking me questions about who's your agent and how do I become a novelist? Um, and all starting with like, yeah, I haven't read your book or I looked at it and it's really not my thing. Like it's not my style. And, but it's, you can't do that without getting a huge dose of humility. If you're doing it professionally, it, you have to get to a place where it's not about you. If it was about you, you would just be on Instagram being an influencer all the time. Putting yourself out yeah. there, putting your writing out there, doing events, going to booths at conferences where kids are going to come up and say the darndest things. Mm. If it's about you, you're done. This is going to break you. Mm. And, and you're going to end up really jaded and, and difficult and or whenever you go home, faking it, pretending like, oh yeah, no, I was huge. Everybody loved me. Mm. You know, so I think that if you do this, there's a humility that's required to keep doing it. And there's a lot of times when in aspiring novelists, I really do, some people just love stories, but overwhelmingly, there's a ton of people who want fame and fortune. Mm, right. And it's like, this is, as I've said before, this is the way to get rich and famous without being beautiful, musically talented, or athletic. Mm -hmm. And not, not to say that, not know, to that say that we we're not. Sam same. and I are right. both, in, Sam and I are both married. all of those things. But Extremely it's, beautiful, <laughs> both of them can vouch. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> we would, hair, if we had had, yeah. if we'd had bands, we would have been huge that way. <laughs> but it's, it is really interesting because you, at this point, you've done this a lot. You've put, you sit down, you pray for your readers, you try to be generous and hospitable. And even when it works and they love it, you put all this time into it, you serve it. And then kids say, I read it in an hour and a half. You know, right. <laughs> you spent six months or nine months or a year on this thing for them. And you have to be able to like smile and high five them. Yeah. And, and be grateful that they, they read it and were fed. Be grateful that they were fed, even though it took you forever. And they treated yeah, it, like, my, a, my they son's treat just, it like a snack. Just crushed the audiobooks in an afternoon, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And they, want, and they want the next thing. It's, right. yeah, I, I sympathize with, uh, with parents. I know a lot of moms who are like, yeah, they slave over dinner. And then people are like, yeah, have the temerity to get hungry again. They're very like, quickly. chew. Uh, Could you please chew your bites? Put your fork down. <laughs> like, this was a good can one. Can I have a snack? <laughs> uh, we just ate 10 minutes ago. I know, but I want a snack. <laughs> yeah. Like, what, when's your next book out? I, I totally agree with you about like, it feels like you have to develop a, 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 a soft heart and a thick skin, like it, it, from the very beginning, if you like purposing and, and you're exactly, if it's, if it is about you, if it is about your performance and your identity, again, like going right. further into the sort of Christian thing about like, I, if my identity is rooted in Sam Smith, famous author or whatever, then I'm, I'm toast. And it's really, cause it is a, it is like sticking your, you know, when you, when you're sharing your, your heart, you're sharing your books and stuff, it's like you're sticking your neck out in a, in a world full of flashing swords and like you will get chopped. Like that's just a fact. And so you have to have a, and, and so many of us who are writers are, are, are timid by nature or introverted, um, do deal with fear, anxiety, that kind of stuff. And, and it's part of like sort of the flip side of the coin. Sometimes I think for some of us, and say, and, what and, would Pickett yeah, do? What would Pickett do? We do. We have to, like, we no. have to think, we have to be super brave, like, and just showing up and being brave. But it's, if it is, if it is your ticket to like, I'm going to be famous and I'm going to get <laughs> like somebody famous is going to name drop me or whatever. If that is such a, a fire that is so, uh, it just does not endure. It's like not, it's not light. It's like a fire that burns up and then dies and it's not an enduring light and, and, um, it won't, it will not satisfy. And you, and I don't know how many people I've heard say that, like, uh, when I was a kid or whatever, like, Oh, if you think fame's gonna, you know, get you, get you fixed and it's going to like satisfy all your deep longings. Like, it won't. I mean, you hear that 10,000 times and you're still like, yeah, you're right. But, but it probably will for me. <laughs> but. It, it, I think it probably will. And, and then you just, it's just a lie. It's just an absolute yeah. lie. So if, and that's why I think like, even when you're first starting as a storyteller, like if you just think of yourself as a, if you think of yourself as a servant and, and enjoy all the good things, but if you think I want to yeah. give someone a gift and if it's 10 people, that's fine. If it's a hundred, that's fine. And I'll work and I'll get after it. And I, and I'm a capitalist. Uh, I'm like, let's, let's go, let's make money whatever. 
but if 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 your identity is wrapped up in it and you're in, and it's just about yep. your it's a ticket for you to fame and fortune like it's a dumb, i think it's just a dumb investment but both because <laughs> it's so, because it's so hard for one thing it's like yep. it's only an insane person would do it it's like what you're going to spend like you said just thousands and thousands of hours writing something down and then you're like i think people should spend their time reading what I wrote. Like it, it is so, it is so audacious. It's so arrogant. It's like an insane thing to, yep. to expect it. And there's a, there's 50 trillion books out. I think that's scientifically a yeah. fact. Um, uh, and 50 and, uh, trillion. So, I think that's, 50 trillion. I think that's per yeah. year. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, why would anybody care to read your, your book? And it's like, it's, so it's, it is super audacious. So if you don't, if you don't come with some, yeah, some measure of humility. Like, <laughs> it'll get knocked. It, it'll get knocked into you. But oh, it'll get knocked. That, it'll that. get knocked in fast. You better be able to roll with it. I actually, this is giving me flashbacks. I'm having I'm having flashbacks <laughs> of uh, one of my first Costco signings, where I got sent into a Costco multiple three to sign Boys of Blur. So the book Boys of Blur was coming out, and I went in there. Nobody's there to meet an author. No, everybody, everybody at Costco <laughs> like to get is, sausage. They're yeah, like, they yeah exactly. Sausage. They're there to get 50 pounds of dog food <laughs> and to buy, you know, TVs they don't need. And some of those play sets my kids always wanted. Right. And so I went and I had this, like, I mean, it was horrific, right? I'm sitting at a little, <laughs> I'm sitting at a little card table and the Costco employees, they don't do this. So I come in the door and there's like, oh gosh, like, what do you need? I'm like, hey, like <laughs> random, the random house sent me here. They're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a card table. Hold on a second. And then like, and you're and you're sort of perched in an aisle with no explanation. And they they <laughs> and they and they print out, they print out a a little piece of paper that just says Andy, Andy Wilson, Wilson. <laughs> and they put it on the table. And they're like, here, you sit here for the next three hours. Not sure if you're for sale. Like, and, like, and I'm not allowed to leave because I'm on a book tour and I'm assigned here. And I've got, you know, I've got <laughs> monitors who check in on me. And then the sales rep's going to call the store and make sure I, you know, it's like it's there's all this accountability around these things when you don't run your own empire. So this was this was with the with a random house title. And it was hellacious. I mean, it was just excruciating. And so then. My response was like, okay, so that was awful. And I've got, and I have more to do, you know, and there's so many people who stopped and kind of looked at the sign and looked at me and like, what's what's going on? Why they let you, one person is like, they let you sit here? Like, what's, (laughs) um, like, I'm required. Okay. Like I'm not, (laughs) but, uh, so then the next time I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to wear a hairnet, even though I don't need it. I'm wearing a red apron and a hairnet, and I'm bringing thousands of sentences on toothpicks. Yes. And, I love it. I remember seeing yeah. that. I remember seeing oh, you do that. Fun. I was like, that and, is the greatest idea. And that was a blast. You know, it's like, <laughs> but I had to be willing to make a fool of myself. Yeah. You know, I had to be yeah. willing to go stand by the table and people, it was samples at Costco. And they rolled up and it'd be like, what are you giving away? And I said, sentences. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, and they'd all kind of pick up a toothpick. And, and seriously, there were people who actually said, like, do you eat it? And I'm like, nope. That's You're, straight out I of mean, the Phantom like, Tollbooth. I mean, I you can, that. you can, one can eat it. It's like, but you read it. And they'd read these different sentences and laugh and think it was funny. And I actually moved a lot of books. I love it. Because they're hardcovers and they're cheap in Costco. But it's, so I sold a lot and it was fun. More importantly, it's like, it was like, I can have excruciating humiliation or I can have joyful humiliation. I can, I can, <laughs> I can enjoy Beautiful. myself and try to be generous and goof off. But yeah, it was that kind of thing. Like getting out there, it's like, oh, it's brutal. And then there's a, a guy I met this last year through COVID who's a, a trainer for basketball players and a lot of NBA players as well. And he said that the saddest thing these guys who've achieved like nba all-star status who are just unhappy and they know they've got this prize in their hands that is ash it's just ash Mm -hmm. Uh, ecclesiastes is true and what they have is nothing and they try to reassure each other by saying well at least everyone wants to be us and it's like at least we're at least we're envied we actually know Mm -hmm. how much this sucks and how much we're still just broken people and we're not actually happy 
but at least everybody else doesn't know that. And I've seen the same thing with authors over and over and over again. I'm published. I have a book published. And they, they're they yeah. like just dripping with insecurity and fear and worry because it's not selling and it's not like people haven't read it or people haven't liked it or or they did and they're scared about what the next book's going to be. Like there's all these insecurities and fears and they end up reassuring themselves like, well, at least other people want to be me or yeah. at least want to be what I am. And that's just deadly. I mean, it's just really, really un- I mean, unhealthy. that's that's a staple of many, many writing programs is they're trying to reassure yeah. you that even though you feel bad about it, it's okay. You should keep doing what you're doing yeah. rather than giving these people some hope of like, either make it or move on. Either way, you can't be a wreck as a human yeah, being. Yeah, <laughs> e- Either way, get your, get your priorities right. Know that you're cooking mac. You're cooking mac and cheese and yeah. you want it to be the best mac and cheese you can make. And then you want to serve it to as many people as you possibly can, many of whom who won't like it, many of whom will eat it too quickly, many of whom will forget it right afterward. But hopefully mm-hmm. you'll, you will leave them better than you found them. I mean, uh, and if, just... if your vision is a, uh, yeah, I would, I would 10 times rather, I would rather read and be around an author who was like making mac and cheese for a f- for a family in the trailer park than like serving cocktails at the, at the sort of <laughs> New York uh, loft apartment with is that that whole uh, that whole even the sort of the the literary awards and, oh yeah and publishing and even sort of the, the the sort of gamed bestseller lists and stuff they're they're such a uh, they're such a little club of like elite people who are trying to please each other and yep. I don't know if you've read some of these articles about like some trying of these award winning books yeah. they like sell like five thousand copies or something yep. they're just they're just like not selling anything and they're selling to each other and and they're writing for each other and it's this little insular bub- bubble which that's I, you know nice again word. that's yeah, yep. <laughs> but it's but I just don't I I don't want to yeah I I, I don't know it's easy to sell oh, I'm so much better than that. but I really don't I, that feels like such a trap I don't feel I just feel sad about that I don't feel like oh um that it's right. it feels so much superior I just feel like I don't want that I I I've been and again I, I think it's a theme that I keep repeating that feels like more and more true to me every day I don't you know that a person cannot receive you know even one thing unless it's given to them by from, from heaven that you know that, yeah. that um, Jesus says and 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 uh, I, I just feel like that's so true that there's no, but I'm just, if, if you're a young writer, like, yeah, as, aspire to serve the mac and cheese is like some of the best advice you could give uh, because, you, you, you know, and, and, and try to make a connection with like, try to look past all the gatekeepers of like, oh, this, yep. this publisher or this agent has um, this coin uh, of um, self-esteem or, or yep. validation. At and, least I can and, say and I have an agent. Yeah. Right. And that, then they'll give it to you. And, and, and we get so desperate that we invent these dumb awards, like some kind of somebody's choice awards. And we put all over the covers of our books to, to say like, somebody picked me. And, you know, meanwhile, it's somebody like, picked me. <laughs> you, you know, and it's just sad. Somebody like, loves not, me. That's got to go on an award. Somebody <laughs> so, picked it, me. That's the somebody <laughs> picked me annual award. And then, it, it's, yeah. But if that's your currency, like just, I would just say like, don't make that your currency. Like make, make, um, give, and again, if it's like, it's much, much better if you just, write a story for your grandmother's knitting club and you just give it to them for Christmas and they all read it. And they're like, great job. If you're young or something like that's way better than being some kind of elite snob who's like lives their whole life for the approval of this other, these other people who, when you look around the room, it's basically just like looking at mirrors. Like we actually need, like, that's what one thing I love about Christianity. I keep coming back to loving Christianity, but it's uh, it's such a dope religion. It's the best. Uh, I think. And, uh, Weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I love the, the the diversity of it. I just love that it's like the most diverse movement in the history of the world. And we have like all these different gifts. And like, I don't have to like, I fit in with people who lay concrete or who are a yep. mason or a plumber or a pastor or a mother. Like, I don't feel superior to any of those people. And I don't really feel inferior either. Like I've had a job, like one of my jobs coming up was I clean toilets. Like that was a job. And I, my dad taught me, you know, all, all work is honorable work. And I just feel like this is another one of those jobs. Yep. It's like a, it's you're, a, it's if you're a, uh, a lay in tile or lay in words. Yes. It's, and I, so I love what you did at Costco. Like, I just love that so, 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 so <laughs> much. Cause, cause that's such a, like, you just, you just embody that. Like you embody, like, I'm not better than the people who hand out samples. Cause the, the truth <laughs> is that's like a, that's a, that's a good thing. Like people eat, people need to eat. And, yep. Except That's for those a, weird I, quinoa samples, those are those ones. You're better than those ones. I will say this though: this comes down to you're all the way back to your loft apartment cocktail party, the Costco thing. 
when I was deciding to do that, the, the answer is always, what would a better character do? What would a more enjoyable character do in a scene? And the simple fact is, if you're trying to live your life, whether you're an author or not, you're trying to live your life in a way that has poetry, you're trying to live your, live your life in a way that has beauty, then everybody would agree that sitting on a porch in West Virginia, telling your kids stories about the rabbits you see down in the grass is more poetic and more beautiful than being in that loft apartment swanking around with other people who also wrote stories. Mm, like it just, yeah. it's a better scene. It's a better scene. It is just a better scene. It's a more resonant scene and it's a better way to be. So, mm. you know, being that person who's just awkwardly sitting on a table at the Costco, that can be a fun scene briefly in an episode of the British office. Uh, which is much, much darker, <laughs> much darker and more jaded than the American version. But it was a lot more fun and a better scene. And I gave more people, people who weren't buying books for me, I gave them a laugh. I gave them yeah, a moment. Gave them something. Yeah, I gave people, I gave people stuff instead of just an mm -hmm. awkward moment. Yeah. It, you weren't just big, this big, um, like sort of vacuum of, of need. Of yeah. like I, <laughs> and, and I felt that I've gone to, to uh, I remember speaking at a literary festival um, close to home here. And total total profit without honor. You know, I can go to somewhere on yeah. the road and have you know maybe a lot of people interested or long signing lines that kind of stuff. But like, I can do something close to home, and there's like five people there. You know, yeah. four of whom have the same last name as me, and it's just <laughs> like. Uh, but that that I remember doing that, and it like really hurt me because I because I, I the, 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 at the time it was, it was several years ago, and it was like that along that whole journey you're talking about of kind of like figuring out. Oh, this is like this can be a really painful thing. And if I'm looking for validation from sort of my capacity to amaze yeah. people or to, to receive worship, which, which you all, we all want. We, and I don't think it's <laughs> even bad to like want to, for people to love your, your work and to buy them and to, and to praise them. I think that's, please that's love fun. my mac and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please. It's like, that's a great thing, but, but yeah, realizing what it is and, and, um, and, uh, not, not letting that be, it's just a, it's a huge tell. Like if, yeah. if, if, uh, if, if, if that's, if that is crushing to us, then it was like, well, what was I actually trying to do? Was I trying to achieve fame and fortune or was it and even going back to Ecclesiastes? Like that's my favorite book ever. And it is, it is full of that, like um, those rhythms of, of, you know, of, of, of we're trying to figure out and there's all this justice and there's all these kind of different things that are happening yeah. that are inexplicable, but he keeps just coming back. So, so I can enjoy, you know, like, like <laughs> fleeting. so like enjoy these simple things and, and trying to have that sort of <laughs> simplicity of heart that that could say, I don't mind serving uh, mac and cheese in a trailer. Like that's a cool yep. thing, and and um, there's nothing wrong with that, and and uh, and it's actually honorable and cool. And and um, but but it, I think there's so there's so much joy. There's so much joy to be had there. Uh, yep. And as the other thing that's amazing is the we've we've talked about this too, but the way that a kid who reads your book, a kid who reads about Heather and Pickett you're imprinting in their memory and it, ha it has a permanency in their imagination that their own life does not. And that's the, mm -hmm. that's the weirdest thing to me about storytelling and about the design that God just baked into reality. We wow. can remember stories and moments from stories in movies or fiction, but especially fiction if it touches our senses, like if it really moves us in, in some physical way. We can remember scenes from books far more vividly and clearly forever than we remember even important days in our own lives. Mm. And it's so it, true. It's just bizarre. Like my birthday three years ago, I got, I have no idea right now. I'd have to go somewhere and try to really focus and remember yeah, what happened or what I did, but I can remember just with perfect clarity scenes with the hobbits, you yes. know, the hobbits yeah, sitting yes. on the rubble of Isengard when the fellowship yeah. gets there. I can <laughs> like, I can just, I'm there. Like, okay. And we share that. Like we share that even though we didn't read it together. Yeah. We I when you when you mention them, I can see the exact image in my mind, pre yep. pre movies yep. of exactly how I saw them. And it's kind of tough because the movies sort of tend to erase that stuff. But yeah, I can kind of I I can still remember the them. feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean either. Uh, but I, I can remember the feeling of like exactly and, and if you read that too, that's one thing that's happened too, is I think it's so intense. Like when people read my books or your books or or um uh, Tolkien, uh, if anybody ever gets around to reading him as well, uh, if they eventually can, get, they run out of stuff by us and they've got to, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta picking up the scraps, the flotsam and jetsam, so to speak. 
Um, but that you, it's a real, it's a real event in their life. Like if you read the, the Lord of the Rings together as a family, like you went to Mordor, like you, yeah. in your mind, I don't know. It's and like you said, it's, yeah. I never even thought about it as being more intense, but you're, you're exactly right. The clarity, it does imprint, like you, you went on a journey together. And so I've had countless people just say, and again, that read aloud, like I did not write this as a read aloud, like Sarah McKenzie. Yeah, was like, oh, you obviously read wrote this as a read aloud, and I'm like, I had no I, no concept of that at all. I had no idea um, that that was even. I don't know, like, but I will, by all means, I will be on your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally, totally. And and so that happened, and 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 so all these families have said like we we basically did did this together, like we had this, and it's like a real, like you said, it's like a real event in their life that they yeah. they felt all the things, and it, it was not just in their mind; it was like in their body, they their heart race, they. That all these things actually physically happened with them. Yep. It's not, it's a, and it really, it's a real and, it, and it's not fake. And that's the weird part. Yeah. So we have to do a better job of preserving and remembering our own moments and our own stories. But at the, at yeah. the same time, God gave us the ability to just receive a vicarious experience in a more permanent way than we receive mm -hmm. actual experience, which is kind of, it's just bizarre to me that he Live did that. Live by faith and not by sight. I right? love it. I love that he did that. But yeah, it's, it's weird, you know, which is and and to that point, which means that if you've read different New Testament accounts that, you know, feeding the 5000 or things like that, there'd be really striking ones that would stick with you forever. But there's also if you've read them, then you have a stronger, uh, an actual stronger handle on it than than some of the people who were there had. Mm. Mm. Which, which is, is which is obvious crazy from, from even about. the accounts in, in, in internal yeah. accounts that isn't that what jesus that. that's what jesus told thomas right yep that right i was thinking thing. of thomas too oh, yep. yeah, yeah. so it is it's a blast i mean writing is really fun but man it's hard and it's long and it's it's a whole saga but it's if it works it's worth it if you see people really devouring stuff it's gratifying to know like okay i put something i just i just fed people something wholesome yeah what an honor it's like yep. a huge honor it's like um, i can't believe that these people are enjoying these stories that sort of, I love too. It's like a, it's a, it is a, I, I do feel validated from that. I know we are just saying like, don't feel yeah, validated. Don't feel validated. I, I, well, I do. <laughs> but I, I, I feel like grateful, like an yep. intense gratitude and sure. kind of like, Oh, well that, that's, you should. It, it's not just, it's more like the, the joy of that, you know, like um the, the famous uh, chariots of fire uh, where he says that, you know, God made me fast. And when I, run i feel his pleasure like yep. I, that's more like that like even in the creating and in then sort of the connection point of, of, of with audiences like both of those things i feel like oh yeah. this is kind of like it's modest but it's like it's what i was put on earth to do and i kind of i feel i feel good about that it's a it's a there's a pleasure in that that's there's awesome. like a harmony a, 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 a rhyming to it that just that, that it feels it feels it feels great like i know I, I would it's not a bad thing to, to chase that a little bit i think it's it's a good it's a good feeling have you uh, have you sold a million units across your series yet? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I don't awesome. know for sure, but it's it's about it's about there. Yeah, that's um, fantastic. I don't that's know very the, cool. I don't know the final. I thing, was going to say if you haven't, we'll have to have you back when you do. But I like how vague you are about it. But it's like, yeah, I think maybe that's a big mile well, marker. I, and you should, yeah. by the way, that is something not for validation, but in terms of selling more books, that's something you should slap on the covers. A little, just a little silver badge with a little, with a little, um, like choice award that um, no, somebody this loves isn't, me. Oh, this oh, isn't no. a choice this award. This is a, this is a one million <laughs> over one million sold. <laughs> over one well, million I, sold is great. When you see when you see New York doing that with half a million, you know, when they remember, <laughs> that's you should you know, just like, remind them. <laughs> just it's one of those things that the the fact that <laughs> the fact that you've done what you've done with an independent. Uh, and the only reason why I'm asking such a probing question is because I want people to understand. I tell people all the time, don't be obsessed with traditional publishing. You don't have to get that validation. I yeah. understand. And they respond by saying, yeah, well, you have it. So easy for you to say. Yeah. You're one of those guys who could have, you know, at any moment, once the books were really going, you could have sidestepped into a, a New York deal um, very easily. And the the question is, you decided not to, and you went for it. You you kept your independent structure going, and eschewed that validation from New York, from Babylon, mm. uh, and have seen <laughs> and have seen tremendous success. I'm like the fact that you moved that many books is fantastic. 
then there's no reason to think that a major house would have moved more. Well, I, that's that's. I think you're right. Like, I think there was a time when that that validation was much more important, or or it felt like that 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 it does feel like a, a, a sort of like the the dollar, like the Zimbabwean dollar to me. Like at one point, it was probably valuable, but like I've been to Zimbabwe, <laughs> and when I was there, it was like I had like a five million dollar Zimbabwe bill, and it just that that currency for me has shifted. And I'm just, yep. it sounds like oh this you know everybody should feel this way, like it's not a big deal, but it's been a had a, a, a growth thing for me for sure but I, but it is true that right now that does not hold very much weight at all for me to like be picked by a, a publisher just because i i i it's sort of like you you don't need them until you uh until you, they don't want you <laughs> when you when you might need them and then when they want you you probably don't need them anymore and, yep. and or they, that's that's my experience which is super limited um, but I'm, I'm fundamentally lazy and always moving on to new projects. <laughs> uh, you know, the next shiny, energetic, the next uh, uh, energetic. Half, of, half of that may be true. Yeah. So, <laughs> so it's the, basically I, I loved like, we, cause when we did hello ninja and got that thing really going with totally independent infrastructure, it was, yeah. it was pretty awesome to have to, to step out of the cash flow burden and the inventory burden and the fulfillment burden brian was involved in that the fulfillment burden of sending stuff off to target some significant burdens you know sending off inventory to target and then they hold it right to the day when they need to pay you and they ship it back and then reorder the next day the exact same units this yeah Yeah. and minus all the damage all the minus all the damaged copies and you're just like what on earth and just saying you know what i i don't want to deal with that i'm like I'm gonna go work on other stuff, and so let's sell this to Harper Collins. That yeah. made perfect sense, like I I said, because of aforementioned laziness and desire to go work <laughs> on other stuff. So, well, your leverage is completely different there too. That you know, you were you were sort of in the long, the long, you had the long stack there in the game, and it's a, that's a totally different conversation. Uh, you know, if you if you weren't you, and if you weren't if that book didn't have that kind of success. So I. I I'm all for like sort of finding partners and getting sure that. It, yeah. When, when you're starting out there, it's, and it's all, it's just a pick your poison kind of a thing. Like what, which kind of a problem do you want? Like, right. And if you, it's all trade offs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then we have, we're having this, uh, well, not the same, but a similar kind of like, how do we deal with distribution and, yep. and, and how do we deal with distribution and as it sort of scales up and up? It's, it's tough. Let me say, if you sold the whole kit and caboodle or signed a deal with a major house to handle that, that would not be, morally culpable behavior and some people weirdly because of our odd like fantasy around the artist and artistic purity they some people would actually be like bothered by that like wait what do you mean what do you mean you're you're doing this with simon and schuster now or you're doing with this random house it's like well i i want them to put it in target and i want to not have to deal with the cash flow nightmare that that entails yeah. so right. i mean it's just it's not a compromise of the art or something like that. It's just, I would like my mac and cheese to reach more people without me. Yeah. Well, I can focus on cooking the next meal as opposed to worrying about trucking ladling, lines. Ladling up every. Yeah. Worrying about paper shortages and long distance hauling drivers who are no longer working and all, all the things that happen when you're running a real, mm-hmm. a real operation stem to stern yourself. So anyway, yeah. I, I really admire the fact that you've done it solo independent. You've accomplished that level, which is fantastic. But in that admiration, I could also fully understand if at some point you said, you know what, I'm building the next series and I don't want to have to start over with this infrastructure or, or handle this cash flow yeah. or sell into foreign territories or, you know, I want to partner with people. There's, there's a ton of reasons to, to tap into the Death Star. It doesn't have to be joining the dark side, but doing what you've done and accomplishing what you've accomplished should be an example to everybody out there who's looking for that New York validation. If you're actually in it to feed people for real, you shouldn't care how you did it or what the, what the model was, what the infrastructure was. Totally. You know, and the, I actually think if you want to get to the New York sort of, if you, if you, if you like that, or for some reason, even non a non nefarious reason, like it might still be the best way to get there. If you like, I wasn't people weren't beating my own, door yeah. down to to offer me deals at publishing companies like right. at the beginning, but but they but they sort of are now, and uh, it's it's a different. So you, you can it's again it's pick your poison like which yep. which way do you want to go and, and and do you want to wait to be picked? Like, and now that you've you gone through the hard part, picked, it might not be worth it 
now that you've actually gone through the hard part where they say, hey, <laughs> right. can we take over this thing for you and give you a much smaller percentage of ownership? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's but I, yeah we have those conversations now yeah i have to do have an agent now for the first time really and and um we're you know i've had those fire them burn those down. Conversations. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's great well you know after the stories or soul food crowd makes their run on the green ember series as if they haven't already read it we know that they all have yeah but so if they haven't they they're can just know, enjoying listening to the to Sam Smith talking the, the, about his the, mellow, the mellifluous tones of <laughs> yes S.D. Smith. <laughs> well, way to go, man. I really think it's it's awesome what you've built and the Rabbits with Swords movement is yeah. far from over. Check out storywarren.com as well. Yep, storywarren.com. If you haven't grabbed the green ember for your kids, do so. At some future date, I want to get uh, Joe Sutphin on here to talk about Little Pilgrim's Progress and then maybe you to come back on here and, and throw shade at his rabbits. I would love that. Yeah. You could, could do much better. <laughs> yes. No, can I, yeah. Thanks for what you guys are doing and thanks for, uh, yeah, it's cool that you, you, um, reminded me uh, specifically of, yeah, you've, you've, uh, you've helped me with advice many times along my career <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I'm hoping that will continue. Um, uh, one I, of just my, wanna, I just want to take, take, take. And one I don't of my spiritual gifts all. is a spiritual gift. I like to say is I told you so. That's my, <laughs> I have the spiritual gift of, I told you so. That should also be on a book cover. My uh, my niece believes there's going to be an I, I told you so room in heaven, where <laughs> in heaven you could just escort people in there and say, "I told you so." <laughs> I told you so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so Thanks, great, guys. great job, Sam. Yep. Thank you. Keep spreading those rabbits. Absolutely. All right. They Cheers. Multiply on their own often. Yes, they <laughs> do. Peace out. If you enjoyed this episode, check out more from Nate and others at cannonballbooks.com. Mm-hmm.